Okay, Sam, let's go ahead and read the given and the if. These two. So when something is inverse, that means x can be replaced with the y and vice versa. So then let's kind of um, look at the, the formula given and mimic what it's going to be given that g prime is negative 2. So we have 1 all over, Xavier, let's write f prime of g of, in this case, we have negative 2. And we want to start from the very, very inside. And that happens to be g prime or g of negative 2. What is g of negative 2 by the given? 5. five. So let's rewrite this. 1 over f prime of 5. And is f prime of 5 given to us? Definitely. So that's going to give us 1 all over negative 1 half. And if it's a multiple choice, it's not, it's not going to be a fraction over a fraction, but what? Negative 2. All right, let's go on to the next one. Milo, let's read the box below. Now, this one did not specifically say they're inverses of each other, but this notation right here automatically says they're inverses. So if you see that little negative one, it's understood. So let's go ahead and write out our um, g prime of 3 in the inverse form. So g prime of 3 ooh, is equal to 1 all over f prime of g of 3. And then starting from the inside might be a little problem. Do I have g of 3 any, anywhere? No, but if they're inverses, can I swap them? So I can go to this one and say, well, then let's go ahead and swap it. g of 3 must be 6. So in that case, I have 1 all over f prime of 6. And then if I go on the inside one more time, do I have f prime of 6? Right there. So we have... 1 all over negative 2, which gives us which letter? Okay. Boom. Okay, Ali, go ahead and read the last one on this page. Let f of x equal 2x plus 1 to the third power of negative 3 times x plus 1 to the third power and let g be the inverse uh, function of f given that f of 0 equals 1. What is the value of g prime of 1? So it's stating that they are inverses of each other. So let's write out the following. We have g prime of 1 is 1 all over f prime of g of 1. So when I go in the inside, what is my g of 1? Hmm. Should I rewrite one of them? Mm -hmm. g of 1 is 0. So we're now looking at 1 all over f prime of 0. And do I have anything with the f prime of zero? If I know my f of x, can I go ahead and derive that and find the f prime and then plug in the zero? Yeah. For sure. And that's going to be our chain rule. So a reminder on the chain rule is bring the power down, keep the inside as it is, one less the power, and then we derive the inside, which is times what? Two. Two. And at this point, all I need to do is plug in the zero. So f prime of zero, that's gonna give us three times zero plus one all squared times two. So how many would that give me? Oh no, because zero plus one is one, six. So our final answer would be one over six, which is D. Okay, now we're looking at card number three on the back. And the last two.
And it's already on the worksheet, so you don't need to write anything down. But I might write it in a, in a different form. So if we're looking at inverse trig um, derivatives, y'all remember what else represented arc sine last year? That arc simply meant what? Sine inverse, <laughs> sine tangent, and then or tangent inverse. They mean the exact same thing. But since in college, you'll most likely use the arc. Let's kind of get in the habit of that. So we have the following that could be written, written in a different way. One all over my denominator times a u prime. They mean the exact same thing. And if you want to rewrite this one as well, we have one all over one plus u squared times u prime. And I know. I think I might have mentioned it last year as to why one of them is a plus and a minus. And if you care, write this down. You don't have to. And I'm going to look at it in terms of x, y, z. So only listen from here. Sine has to do with opposite and what? And hypotenuse. If y'all remember Pythagorean theorem, it was a squared plus b squared is c squared, right? And if I have to make an equation only dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse, what operation do I need? C squared minus B squared, right? That's where the minus is coming from. And also for the tangent has to do with opposite and adjacent. And if y'all remember opposite and adjacent, they're A and B and A squared and B squared are being added. And that's the logic behind it, okay? Not that it really matters. All right, so for this one, your main thing is letting u equal whatever inside the argument of the arc sign. So in our case, let's go ahead and circle the u. So we have u is equal to 2x. Xavier, keep writing. And if I mimic the formula, it says derive the u. What is the derivative of the u? 2. And then it says square root of 1 minus u squared. And in this case, our u is 2x, 2x all squared. Here is a common mistake that I saw on unit two tests from last semester. I had a lot of you guys, or very few of you guys write it in this form, instead of two X all squared. These two are two different values. Because the second one really in the end is four X squared. So don't assume I'm gonna put in the parentheses visually for you, all right? Does everyone go with that? Put it in parentheses, it does matter. It'll change the whole problem up. And that's it. Okay, so let's pra practice our tangent. Who is my u? I have nobody in this class. 3x, there you go. So I have y is equal to, so if I mimic the formula, it says u prime, what is our u prime? Three, all over, and our formula says one plus the u squared, and what do we have to remember? Parentheses. All right, for C, how many locations do you see our X? Two, so what are we going to use? Product rule. That's a lot of writing right here. Okay, so for the product rule, what is the derivative of the first one? One, and then I keep the second one as it is. And then we add, keep the first one, and we derive the second piece. The second piece is where we need our u value. So let's write on here, u is equal to x to the 1 half. And the rule is, we derive the u. When I derive the u, and I bring the 1 half to the front, what is my new power? Negative 1 half. And this is sine, so I need square root of 1 minus that piece and put it in parentheses. And it's okay if it looks kind of messy like this. Leave it exactly as, as we have it. If you wanted to go further, what else can I simplify the last piece inside the radical? If I have one half and then two power, just, it's, it's just gonna be x, okay? So if you wanna leave it as x, go for it. But to be safe, let's leave it as it is. 
All right, let's go on to part D. Who is my U on this one? E to the 2X. U is equal to E to the 2X. Right, Sam? Mm-hmm. So we now have Y prime is equal to the coefficient, leave it as it is. I'm just going to tag along. And if I go in and mimic what I have, it says to find the derivative of the U. So what is the derivative of E to the X? Uh-huh. It is itself times the derivative of the power. So I now have square root of 1 minus, and what do I need after that? Parentheses. And just leave it like that. So as a reminder for the homework, um, I am going to, I'm not going to do the last one. Let's do a quick review on some of the problems from pre-cal. Because I know what the arc, um, inverse is, we have to find the angle measurement, and maybe you forgot some of the topic. So write the following out. This is going to be homework help. Y'all ready? And I'm going to go over two problems. The first one I'm going to go over is arc sine of one half. When given the ratio, if you recall from last year, you're, you're asked to find the angle measurement. Sine has a ratio of opposite over what? Hypotenuse. So if I were to draw this right triangle, and here's my angle measurement. My opposite is right here. Hypotenuse has to be the longest side. What does that make my side measure be right here? Radical three. What do you guys remember about the opposite of the side one? How many degrees? 30. 30. And what was that in radian mode? Pi over, six. Pi over six, very good. And that will be our final answer. Just as a reminder. I'm gonna do one more as a reminder. Let's do one with the arctangent. And let's say I give you an awkward number like radical three over three. And we know um, tangent has to do with, with what over what? Opposite over adjacent. But the problem is, there's not a combination of radical three and three at the same time in our special right triangle. So if y'all remember back last year, I had you guys unrationalize. And when I do, we get three over three radical three, which then gives me one over root three. So let's draw that. So here's my X. So my opposite is one this time. And then adjacent is radical three. And that's going to make my hypotenuse no matter what too. And again, what happens to that angle? Is it pi over six again? So if you see a number combination that's different, go ahead and undo the rationalizing and it will give you the um, value. Do we need a reminder on the special right real quick? The ratios? Okay. Let's write out. We have one, one, root two. And we also have one, root three and two. And if y'all remember, it was 45, 45, 90, which was pi over four, pi over four, and pi over two. And we used that the whole semester. And then we had 30, 60, 90, pi over six, pi over three, pi over two. Good?